as part of verification, as I discussed, let's do a mesh refinement study. And I'll go to Ansys Mechanical and I'll actually close it because I'm going to create another uh, project in, in the project page. So I'll go back to the project page. And what I'll do is I'm going to use the same geometry and uh, engineering data. So I'm going to right click on model and say duplicate. You might have to wait uh, for a little bit and you can see the engineering data and geometry are shared. So I cannot change that here. I'll have to change it here, uh, but I can change the mesh, uh, which I'll do now. So let me call this mesh two and let me go into model. I can, you know, start off from any of these. And I'll go under mesh and instead of one division per bar, I'll say 10. Okay. And it, this graphic indicates uh, those 10 divisions and let me say update the mesh. And that shows me, you know, all these additional points at which I'm asking it to calculate the displacement. And it turns out it'll also calculate the rotation stone bother about that you know once you get into uh, beam elements with cantilever beam uh, module then that'll make sense and I can check that you know so I have a lot more uh, points at which I'm asking answers to calculate the the displacements okay uh, so it has to write a lot more algebraic equations I'll go back to um, single select um, let I, I won't worry about getting out of uh, meshing, or maybe if I, I click this, you know, I'll get out of, I'll get, I was trying to get this, get this arrow here. And um, then all I need to do is click solve, so it'll regenerate, you know, all the algebraic equations uh, using the same procedure, and it'll also redo the post processing. Now, if you look at the results, um, the, the, you know, I, I checked the, uh, the displacements and they came out to be the same as, as before. So if I look at the deformation probe, you will see that the, the value didn't change at all. Uh, and all the results, you know, none of the results change. So even with one element, you will get very good results. Uh, of course, in our mathematical model, you know, that's the case. Even with the more, you know, putting in the bending and so on, the way ANSYS does it, um, as you'll probably see later, um, it gives you very close to the exact um, exact answer. Um, but you can also see the bending effect because now it lets me visualize it. So I'll, I'll go under, I'll go to total deformation. And what I'll do is if I say auto scale and turn on, yeah, the, the wireframe is turned on. You can see, you know, you can see the bending effect. In fact, you can super exaggerate the deformations. Uh, and, you know, that's one thing you can do on the computer. And, you know, it's, it's useful to uh, build physical intuition. You can see that, you know, there is a little bit of, of a bending effect, but that um, that is small. And that's why our, um, you know, the results match with our hand calculations uh, quite well. And also with uh, we've checked it against an FEA code that doesn't in, involve uh, bending. So, um, and and actually it can, it, could, it could have shown us this shape with one element, but it uh, decides because it has a third order interpolation, uh, but it's, uh, you can think of it as a defect in the, in the visualization of line elements. Um, and so I have to put in a lot of elements to actually see that, that third order interpolation. And uh, you, you can see that there are bending effects, but they are small. So I can save it. And this quick mesh refinement study indicated that, you know, our, our results are, are independent of the mesh. And so through all the checks that we have done, we can be quite sure that we have solved this, this truss problem correctly.